Hello scientists, welcome back to day two of our jelly crystal experiment. Um, if you were able to do the first experiment yesterday, then you can go ahead and take your jelly crystals out. I'm going to bring mine up here. Okay, and if you didn't do it, that's okay. You'll be able to watch me and see how they look after the second day. Okay, now remember that we had our purple ones, our blue ones, and our yellow ones. Those were the beads that were actually colored already, okay? And then remember that the red ones and the green ones are the ones where I put the white crystals in along with some food coloring or water color, okay? So, and remember this one in the back here, this was the one that only had four jelly crystals in it a clear one, a blue one, a yellow one, and a purple one, okay? And that was the one, <clears throat> the ones that I measured using our paper towel, okay? So what I'm gonna do to get these out, okay, is I have a bowl here. So I'm gonna dump the water into the bowl. Okay, and if you're near a computer right now, do not do this without your parents' help, okay? Now it's interesting, remember this one had ones of different colored beads in it. Remember there's a blue one, yellow one, purple one, clear one. Let's see what they look like now. I'm gonna shake it off a little bit so I can bring it to the camera without it getting wet. First off, they're huge. It is crazy how much bigger they are than they were before. Remember before you could barely even see them? Check that out, scientists. It is bigger than the tip of my thumb, okay? Now this one looks perfectly clear, right? Okay, and you can see they're squishy. They almost feel a little bit slimy, but they don't stick to your fingers at all, which is really nice. Okay, and then you can also see that they're translucent, which means you can see light through them, right? So you would think that this one's the clear one, right? But let's check. So if you're not using them and you wanna um, just set them aside, but they're still easy to find, you can just set them on a paper towel, okay? Now that is interesting, scientists. I was not expecting this for the experiment. Look at this one is also clear. So the colored ones actually lost their color overnight. I did not know that was gonna happen. Those are the best parts of experiments when you get surprised because you don't even know what's gonna happen yourself. I assumed, right, that there would still be a purple one, there would still be a yellow one, there would still be a blue one, and there would be one clear one, but they're all clear. That is awesome, which means this one's the smallest. So this one's the smallest now. <clears throat> so I would think that that would be the blue one because the blue one was the smallest one yesterday, right? And the smaller they are at the start of the experiment, the less water they can absorb, okay? So the smaller they can get by the end of the experiment. So I'm guessing this was the blue one and then these other two are about the same size, and then this one's definitely the biggest. So I'm guessing that this one was the purple one, right? Because that purple dot is the biggest, okay? That is crazy, scientists. I assumed that they were gonna stay the same color, and they did not. So that means that the color got a little bit absorbed in the water, I think, okay? But the water looks pretty clear. So the little bit of color that was in the crystals must have gotten taken out by the water. So the crystal soaked up the water, that the water soaked up the color. That is crazy, I did not expect that to happen. Which means it's a little bit hard to measure compared to this one, right? Because we had to know which color they were, but that's okay, we can still make a guess, right? Based on what we knew before the experiment started and now after the experiment, okay? So I'm gonna set these aside and then let's take a look at the other ones. So this one, these were the yellow ones, okay? We know that because the water's yellow. So same thing, I'm gonna dump them out. 
Okay, actually, I'm not going to dump them out in here. What I'm just going to do in here, I'm going to put my finger right here. And I'm just going to dump the water out. Because we're going to do something really cool with this. We're going to do another experiment with these that you can also do at home. And it also takes a day to finish. So this is actually going to be a three-day experiment, scientists, which I'm really excited about. So I'm just going to dump the water out of this one. Put my finger there, kind of act, act as a filter. Let all the water come out, keep the crystals in. Okay, but if you're doing it with cups and it's a little bit harder to put your whole hand over the cup, you can just dump them out into a bowl like I did, and then you can, and then you can pick the crystals out of the bowl. So what I'm gonna do here, scientists, is I have a clear, tall, skinny bottle. Okay, this used to have olive oil in it. And then when it was all empty, I saved it. So if you have any bottles like this at home, okay, then you can also do this experiment. If not, you can also do it in a cup. It just works. Hopefully it'll work a little bit better. Remember, we never know exactly how our experiments are going to work. It's supposed to work a little bit better if the bottle is skinnier. Okay, that's how I've discovered it in the past. But remember, just because you do an experiment one time and it ends up a certain way, doesn't necessarily mean it will always end up that same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting the yellow ones in the bottom of my bottle. Now you can see they're not super, super yellow, right? Like they're kind of yellow, but they're not bright yellow. I wouldn't say these are bright yellow. So the ones at the bottom, the ones at the top in the bottle were the ones at the bottom of the beaker, okay? Because the ones on the top went in first. So you can see the ones at the bottom are definitely more yellow than the ones on the, I'm sorry, the ones in the bottom of the beaker now at the top of the bottle. Those ones are definitely brighter than the ones that are at the top. So I think that the ones at the bottom, some of the color must have soaked down to the bottom. Okay, so you can see that we have our yellow ones there. Now remember one of the questions we were asking is would the crystals soak up a color if we took clear, clear crystals put them in water that had watercolor in it, would it soak them up? So let's find out. <clears throat> Remember this, these were clear crystals that I put into red water. Let's see what these crystals look like. So I'm gonna take my bowl. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm also some of my friends. I think that one of your projects um, that I've seen was to make, was seeing one of the teachers make a bowl. In this bowl that I'm dumping this into, my aunt made this with her hands. She's really good at pottery. I know that some of you have an interest in it, so I thought you would like to know that. So the water I'm dumping out is really, really red. And then let's see what the actual crystals look like. Now this experiment that we're doing in this tall bottle, scientists, we're going to see if we can make a rainbow in this bottle. Okay, we're going to see if the colors that are in the crystals will actually blend together. Okay, so we're starting with yellow and then red on top of yellow. Does anybody know what color you make when you combine red and yellow? If you do, you can say it out loud. If not, we can see if we can make that color using this experiment, okay? Because what we're hoping we're hoping that some of the water from the red ones will kind of, gravity will pull it down into the yellow ones. That's kind of our goal. And remember, scientists, remember that I only put a couple pinches of crystals into these bottles, right? You can already see that some of the red is creeping down there. Okay, so we have red there. Now, that was a lot of red crystals. So next one, I'm going to add some blue, but I'm not going to add as many. So I'm doing the same thing on the side here. I'm just dumping, I'm pouring the water out into the bowl. Now, did the red crystals absorb the red water? Absolutely, right? Those are super bright red, which is really cool. So now you know that you can make your crystals any color you want by soaking them in water that has watercolor or paint or food coloring in it, okay? 
And here's our blue crystals. Remember, so these ones were blue at the start. So I'm gonna add some blue crystals on top of the red ones. Now, just like with the yellow ones, the blue ones are deeper blue down at the bottom. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dump the ones from the top into my bowl of water. Then the ones at the bottom that are brighter blue, I'm gonna put right here. Check that out. That's looking pretty cool, scientists. I hope that yours is also looking awesome at home. Then on top of the blue, here's our purple ones. That water is super purple, huh? So remember the, this one, these ones were purple at the start. So I'm gonna dump some of those out. Put some purple ones on top of the blue ones. Remember if they're still dripping wet, if you're trying to move them around and they're still dripping wet, you can just soak them in a paper towel just to remove any of the excess moisture so that they're not dripping all over the place. So we're gonna add some purple on top. Okay, and then the last color that we did, remember we soaked some clear crystals in green water. So let's see what those look like. I'm gonna put them on my paper towel just to soak up some excess water. Those ones are pretty green, right? So our clear crystals were definitely able to soak up not only the water, but also the color that was in the water. So I'm gonna kind of push these down as much as I can. Okay, so remember we went yellow, red, blue, purple, green. You can already see some of the red is dripping down. Yellow, red, blue, purple, green. Now, scientists, when we come back tomorrow, we will see if all those colors are staying separate or if they're kind of mixing together and maybe making some new colors, okay? Now, one other experiment we're gonna do, scientists, is we're going to take some of our crystals, I'll take some out from the bowl, Going to take some of the crystals and we're going to see if we can get them to shrink again. What do you think we would have to do to get these crystals to shrink back to their normal size? Think about how they started small, okay, and then we soaked them in water and they were able to soak up all of that water because they're polymers. So, what do you think we need to do to make them shrink back down? How can we dry them out? How can we get the water out of them? You can squeeze them if you want. If you think about it like a sponge, right? When you squeeze a sponge, water drips out of the sponge. But I can squeeze this one. I'm squeezing it pretty hard and no water's dripping out. You can break them into smaller pieces if you want, right? Just by squeezing them, you can make it smaller and smaller and smaller and it feels pretty cool, okay? But you can't squeeze water out of them. So it's not like a towel or a sponge where you can wring it out and use your energy to get rid of the water. So what would soak the water up from these? You could try putting them in paper towels and wrapping, dabbing them with paper towels, right? Because a lot of times that can help soak up water. Okay, so you can try that and that might help a little bit, okay? But I think that if we leave them out in the sun, okay? I think if we leave them out in the sun, that might evaporate some of the water from them. Remember we talked about how rain is made during one of our experiments we did at school and how the sun makes water evaporate from the tops of lakes and rivers and oceans and then it gets up in the clouds. And then when the clouds have evaporated so much water, they get full and then the water comes back down. Okay, we can see if we can make the water from these jelly crystals evaporate out and if they shrink back down. So what I want you to do is I want you to put them on a paper towel and I want you to draw a circle around them, just like we did when they were tiny. Okay, draw a circle around them. And then 
will see leave them out in the sun all day today all night tonight and all day tomorrow okay so tomorrow after they've been in the sun for a little bit tomorrow and today go back out and see how big they are compared to the circle you drew around them at the start okay and i want you to make a hypothesis what do you think is going to happen you think they're going to get a little bit smaller do you think they're going to stay the same size or do you think think they're going to shrink all the way back down to their original form and they were really tiny and really hard. Okay, so make that guess in your head or you can tell your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister. Okay, put it somewhere where you're not going to lose it outside, but somewhere where it's always going to be in the sun where it's not going to be under shade. Okay, and we'll check back with that experiment tomorrow and we'll check back with our bottle and see if any colors, if any new colors have formed. Okay, scientists, I hope you have fun playing with your jelly crystals. Of course, you can play with them. You can do whatever you want with them after this video is done. They are yours, okay? Just remember not to eat them. They're not going to hurt you, but we still don't want to eat them. Okay, scientists, thank you so much for doing this experiment with me today. I cannot wait to check in tomorrow and see how this bottle looks. All right, scientists.